Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to learn about something known as CrowdMed. What this is, it's a crowdsourced program where medical detectives come together, or more or less retired doctors, to solve some of the world's most difficult medical cases and to help revolutionize the economics of modern medicine. As medical detectives, the retired doctors place online bets, if you will, on the most likely solutions for patients with hard-to-diagnose medical conditions. They also gather these suggested medical diagnoses from hundreds of retired doctors and other community members and share what they've learned to see if they are able to solve cases. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, CEO Jared Hyman of what is known as CrowdMed. Jared, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Daniel. How are you? Uh, Were you the one that started this? Yeah, um, I founded the company about two years ago. Okay, now how did you see a need out there? Were you just watching like an episode of House and thought, why don't I take it outside and try something different? <laughs> um, well, what we do does have parallels to House, but um, that, was, that was not the initial inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> it was something else instead then. Tell us how it all started for you. Well, the inspiration was actually from my little sister, Carly, who spent three years with a very difficult, chronic, undiagnosed medical condition. Uh, over that three-year period, I watched as, as she saw almost two dozen different specialists, um, incurred uh, over $100,000 in medical expenses, wow. and which is really, uh, she had a rare, a rare condition that uh, the medical system struggled to come up with the right diagnosis for, and she experienced you know, terrible symptoms uh, during the three years that it took for her to finally arrive at a correct diagnosis. And I wanted to do something to help people like her who, who don't have a, a straightforward medical diagnosis or perhaps they have a diagnosis but not a straightforward treatment plan and to save them the, the incredible uh, financial and emotional costs of just bouncing from doctor to doctor, desperately seeking answers for, for months or years. And uh, that's what inspired CrowdMed. And I knew the crowds could perhaps do a much better job of this than uh, than, than seeing one specialist at a time. Now, it would seem, too, that you kind of remove some of the shackles that sometimes bind doctors for being able to actually make a diagnosis when you think of things that get in the way, such as medical insurance or hospital procedures. Does that kind of cut through a li- of that quite a bit? Well, we, we operate completely online. Okay. And whenever you, you virtualize something and, and you bring it to the Internet, uh, you get rid of all sort of uh, inefficiencies, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, everything from the uh, the time it takes to book an appointment with your next doctor to uh, travel time, you know, perhaps bouncing around the country looking for the right specialists. Uh, also, uh, just simple things like the time it takes to fill out a patient questionnaire when you visit a new a new doctor. Um, you know, we we compress it into a very efficient process where a patient simply answers a, our, our online patient questionnaire where we collect all the relevant details of their case, and we publish it instantly on our website for our community of over 10,000 medical experts from around the world to all see the same information at the same time. And a subset of them, often several dozen, will chime in and, and try to help out with that particular case. And it's all done online in real time, and it's, it's, it's very efficient compared to uh, the, the brick-and-mortar world. Mm-hmm. Well, certainly sitting there waiting for the doctor to show up and, you know, during a visit that you've actually scheduled, everybody knows what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, uh, you're billing me for an hour, but I didn't get in to see you, you know, until about 15 minutes after the appointment was scheduled, and then it was only for five minutes, and then I'm out the door. But this here, you really tend to take more time with something like this. About what is the average as far as the amount of doctors that, look at a specific case here that's submitted online, you know, as far as the group goes? Uh, well, our patients get a, get a pretty good deal in terms of how much attention they get from our, our medical detective community uh, versus how much they pay. So we have three different case submission options. Uh, we have a free, a free package where a patient can submit their case for free, and often those folks will hear from more than a dozen, maybe, uh, say, 12 to 15 uh, uh, medical detectives from around the world uh, without paying a dime, um, other than the uh, $50 refundable deposit that we collect up front and then get back to them at the end of the process uh, once they tell us the answers they received and complete our brief uh, post survey so we can see how we did. Um, we also have a, a standard package 
which costs two hundred ninety nine dollars. Two hundred dollars of that goes directly to the uh, medical detectives who do the best job solving that case. Mm -hmm. and, and by offering that two hundred dollar incentive, it really attracts the best and brightest detectives within our community. And uh, those patients often hear from many more detectives um, because of that cash, uh, that cash incentive. So those patients uh, currently, I think, we're averaging about 30 uh, medical detectives for, uh, for, for those, those cases. Mm -hmm. And we have a premium package, uh, which is, costs $499, $300 of which uh, goes to the medical detectives. And that package also has a, a longer case duration. Uh, those cases remain on the site for about three months. And those people can hear from uh, upwards of 40 or 50 uh, medical detectives and get really, really good and, and detailed uh, data to work with. Now, how did you pull together the doctors that actually work in this group? Do you actually go out and look for retired doctors, or are they, some of them actually currently practicing? Where do you get them from? Well, we have a diverse community. Um, okay. It's not only doctors, and it's not only retired doctors, although those are, those are two uh, very prominent groups on, on, in, our, in our community. Uh, about two-thirds of our active medical detectives either work in or study medicine. Uh, those could be physicians retired physicians, nurses, med students. Uh, we also welcome medical detectives that might have uh, a different background, uh, for example, acupuncturists or chiropractors or nutritionists mm -hmm. who all have unique perspectives to, to bring to the table. Um, and uh, you know, those, all those groups are involved, although I will say that uh, retired physicians are, are one of our most active groups um, and, and certainly are very helpful to our patients because you know, they can bring years of experience uh, and, uh, to the table. Um, in terms of how we recruit and incentivize them, uh, so far most of our medical detectives have learned about us through either word of mouth uh, or PR, uh, radio interviews like this, mm -hmm. uh, for example. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, we've had over 10,000 join, uh, join the site. At any given month, we usually have about 400 that are that are active, you know, during that during that month, and uh, they participate for a variety of reasons. Uh, everything from the uh, cash incentives that I mentioned before. Uh, we do have some medical detectives who have earned thousands of dollars um, by, by by doing a really good job of solving cases on our site. Uh, but they really tell us it's it's the soft incentives that motivate them the most. Uh, things like altruism, uh, just simply helping people in a way that uh, is often robbed of them in clinical practice with all the hassles around insurance claims and, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, that was the Yeah, that was what I was trying to point out earlier in my question was the fact that sometimes doctors can be shackled by, you know, the rules of insurance, for instance, and a lot of hospitals, you know, that's a major part of their funding comes from insurance companies. And, and you've certainly, people who like to watch shows, you know, medical shows, for instance, there was that one situation in-house, for instance, where there was a major, you know, insurance company that was funding close to 80% of the hospital's operating costs, and all of a sudden they're saying, well, we're not allowed to touch anything like this, otherwise we're going to pull our funding so doctors can't tend to do what they feel they could do because of those kinds of shackles around liability, for instance, and rules and bureaucracy and all that. Absolutely. It's, it's a major problem uh, mm -hmm. with, with the very structure of our medical system. Uh, a lot of doctors complain that, that they feel that they work for the insurance company as opposed to working for their patients. Mm -hmm. and, and, and nobody likes that. The doctors don't, the patients don't either. Um, on our side, it's much more pure. Uh, our medical detectives have one client, and that's the patient. Uh, and we have one client, uh, the patient. So um, our incentives are all very well aligned, and, and it's, it's the patient who, who's in charge on our site. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm on the, the website, which is crowdmed.com, and I was looking here and I see that you can actually look at live cases that are seemingly up for bid, so to speak, because I was you know, mentioning earlier in the program that there seems to be like a betting pool that goes on for what is it, the doctor who comes through with the best diagnosis and, and, and suggestion of how to deal with it, or how, how does that work? It seems like an interesting incentive, so to speak. You know, we got to create our own world when we developed CrowdSet. And in our world... <laughs> our world, it's ideal. It actually works. <laughs> it, 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 it. We think our world works a lot better than the, uh, the default world, if you will. Right. <laughs> um, and we got to make our own rules. And, you know, one thing we wanted to do is we wanted to base 
everything on our site from, from point winnings to uh, cash compensation winnings. We wanted to base it all on performance. Mm -hmm. So a medical detective doesn't get anything at all for simply participating in a case. They can only win cash and only win points if they actually provide a diagnostic or solution suggestion that the patient feels is, is the best one. And uh, the patient can, uh, can decide what was the best answer. And only the, the medical detectives who either suggested or supported that answer uh, win cash and points. Okay. So it's very gamified, if you will. That's a, a term in Silicon Valley. To, it means that it's, it's almost set up with a lot of game-like attributes. But we recognize this is not all fun and games. Uh, we're dealing with people that have uh, serious health, health conditions and sometimes life or death situations. So even though we've tried to make it as, um, as engaging for our detective community as we can by using this, these gamification features, um, it's still very much a serious site. And uh, our medical detectives take their, their job seriously. Well, I can take a look at some of the cases that I see here online and realize that you're absolutely true about saying that this is something that we take seriously, and certainly I didn't mean to suggest that the way you take a look at compensation or incentive to be lighthearted and joking. When you put it into a game format, it's quite fascinating how the human condition or the way we think clicks into a mode where there is the competition, but it's mostly to also do our very best while we're in that game, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we try to achieve a balance between competition and collaboration, mm -hmm. where, yes, our medical detectives are competing with one another to, to win points in cash, and that keeps it engaging for them and keeps it fun and, and keeps them on, on their toes. But at the same time, we have a lot of features to enable collaboration between the medical detectives and the patient and between the medical detectives themselves. So they both compete in collaborating, and, and that way we can kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, as somebody who goes on and says, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use this service, uh, what happens, they, they obviously they answer a set of questions about the nature of what it is they want to find out about. But, you know, once, a, I guess, an answer has been achieved, what then happens? Do they get suggested on where to go to a hospital or who to go to get this taken care of? How does that work? Well, our, our main deliverable are, uh, to, to our patients, the main thing we give them is, is a report. Uh, once their case has, has finished its duration on the site, that case duration is typically between 30 and 90 days. And that report includes a short list of the most probable diagnostic and solution suggestions for that patient according to the consensus opinion of our medical detective community. Uh, it also includes a, a list of why the medical detectives felt a certain diagnosis or solution was correct. Um, it, it includes uh, a transcript of all the uh, chat correspondence that took place between the patient and the detectives and between the detectives themselves as they debated the, the merits or pros and cons of, of different possibilities. And it's, it's really meant to be a, a very all-encompassing you know, PDF format report that the patient can then print out and take to their doctor and say, hey, doc, you know, out of the 13,000 medical conditions known to man, here's the three or four that CrowdMed feels are really the most likely for me. And here's what they suggest in terms of next steps, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, perhaps diagnostic tests to, to be run to confirm this or imaging tests that we should run to confirm this, um, perhaps uh, some ideas for treatment possibilities. But it's really up to the patient and their physician to determine the ultimate definitive diagnosis and treatment plan. We're just trying to narrow the field from 13,000 possibilities down to a handful of, of insightful and um, you know, a short list of the most insightful possibilities. Because when you think about it, too, most of what people pay out in medical expenses is in diagnostics and testing, trying to figure out well, what's wrong before it can be solved. And I think that's what really keeps people sort of in that fear mode about going to the doctor about anything is, they really just don't know what it's going to cost, and I can see how something like this really streamlines that process quite a bit. Very much so. And mm -hmm. we, we've run statistics actually to actually try to quantify how much we streamline the process. Uh, we looked at, uh, for the patients who submit a case on our site, we looked at how much time and cost they already incurred seeking a diagnosis versus the, the time and cost that it took our community to uh, come up with, with answers that were uh, almost, well, most of the time better than what the medical system had produced. Mm -hmm. So for background, about 60% of our patients tell us that our community provided insights 
that led them closer to a correct diagnosis or cure than had all of the doctors they had seen to date. And on average, our patients have seen eight doctors to date. So our, our community um, often does more in, in just a couple of months and, and at a negligible cost than, than uh, the patient had, um, had experienced over the past eight years on average, seeing eight doctors on average over the eight-year period. Mm -hmm. um, and we do it at, believe it or not, about one three hundredth the cost of, of what the patient had incurred to date in the medical system and about 50 times faster than, um, than what the patient had incurred to date in the medical system. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, you know, when you look at time or cost, it's 50 to 300 times more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dramatic. Well, I think it's significant, too. And, in fact, you know, as you were mentioning earlier, one of the biggest rewards the doctors or the medical professionals that are involved in this feel is that sense of altruism, for instance, I now can do what I went to school and what I've dedicated my life to do. And it's certainly not sitting around in boardrooms trying to figure out what I'm allowed to do legally and what I'm not allowed to do, you know, <laughs> instead of actually taking care of what you're there to do in the first place. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and we view the, the medical detectives as much as, uh, as our customers as we view the patients. And we want to provide them a very easy and fun and engaging way to do with, with what they with what, what they uh, went to med school to do, which is mm -hmm. simply practice medicine and help people in a, in a very direct way. And um, they can do that on our site without all the, uh, all, all the shackles of, of clinical practice. And, and I think it's just such a great thing. How has this been received? You know, the government, they tend to snoop around, then you get special interest groups that feel threatened. And all of a sudden, you know, something that was a, is a great thing, it sounds like, all of a sudden gets tied up with that kind of thing. Do you see anything like that happening here or? You know, we, we've been very careful to, to stay within the, uh, the regulatory, stay on the right side of, of the legal system and, and the regulatory guidelines that are set up. Uh, I consulted with a lot of attorneys um, as I was launching CrowdMed, as I'm sure you can imagine, and, and we were very careful to, um, to work within the existing frameworks in terms of uh, what's legal and what's not, and uh, you know, we did a lot of things to, to stay on, on the right side of the FDA and and the AMA and, and, and all those existing interests. Um, so, you know, we, we've been careful, and, and so far we haven't had any, uh, haven't received any, uh, anything, uh, any warnings or anything negative from, from any of the regulatory bodies um, or, the, uh, or the AMA or any of, any of those, uh, those groups because, you know, we've been careful to, to, to stay within the law and, and on the right side of, um, of, those, of those issues. You know, and you would think, too, because there's always the possibility the insurance company takes a look at it and says, oh, wait a minute, you know, I, I don't think I really like what's going on and maybe we ought to do something about this. But the fact is, you're streamlining what, again, I mentioned earlier, is seemingly the, the, the heaviest part of the medical bill is in figuring out what's wrong. You streamline this, now you're saving these guys money. It seems to me that maybe they might jump on board and find a way to be involved without throwing all their shackles all over what you need to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, right now uh, we, haven't, we, don't, we haven't had any formal collaboration with insurers, but uh, we speculate that in the coming months or years, as, as CrowdMed becomes more well-known within the medical community, um, that we might be hearing from them um, because, uh, you know, if we're saving... 300 times in terms of cost, if we're streamlining the process by orders of magnitude, you would think that insurers would, would, would want to uh, send their patients to us because wouldn't they rather a patient be diagnosed sooner rather than later and, and at a lower cost? Um, so we expect to hear from them probably. We haven't yet. Um, I, but uh, we've had some preliminary conversations actually with, with a few insurers that we've reached out to. Um, they are, uh, by their own nature, a bit slow moving, as, as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> yes. We've talked about it many times on the program. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I expect that uh, we'll probably have partnerships in, in the coming months and years with them. And hopefully when those partnerships do occur, they don't start shackling and tying it up with a bunch of regulations and nonsense that turn something that is a great idea into something that maybe people start avoiding altogether. And so it's pretty interesting the way that works. Now, how has it been for the people who participate in this? You know, say I go online and... I'm going to take a shot and see if I can get a diagnosis here and then take it into my doctor. What has been the response from those people? You know, it's been interesting. Um, doctors have become a bit uh, uh, conditioned over the years to have this, this, this allergic reaction to anything the patient brings in from the Internet. 
Right. Because right? they're, they're, they're used to patients just... Which is reasonable. Well, yeah, exactly. I understand how, how, how that came to be. Um, you know, they've had patients who spend hours and hours on, uh, on WebMD and doing Google searches, and they then, you know, they have a headache, and then they're like, hey, doc, I must have brain cancer, and, and here's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Internet can certainly convince you of something that you want to be convinced of, can it? <laughs> exactly, or, or your worst fear, perhaps. Um, but but what, what, what doctors have found is a CrowdMed report is, is something fundamentally different. So you know, first like, oh no, something else from the internet. But then they realize this is something completely different than what the patient could have come up with on their own. Uh, you know, this is the consensus opinion of, of a dozen or more medical experts who have, have, have come to a certain conclusion in a very sane and rational and even keeled kind of way. And um, their sole incentive is, is to suggest or support what turns out to be the right answer. Mm-hmm. And um, so our, our results are usually uh, very, very sane and, and very well backed up and, and, and from a, a neutral third-party perspective. And once physicians realize that, that our, they see the quality of our results, then, then they become much more accepting. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm on the website now, and it's pretty fascinating when you're viewing uh, live cases, for instance, and you take a look at how it's all laid out and realize, you know, a common person really wouldn't go into a doctor with this kind of language. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, I don't think most patients could, could come up with on their own what, what our community <laughs> can. Um, and that's why we exist. You know, we mm-hmm. want to be a third alternative where, you know, right now if you're a patient and you're sick, there are two places you can go. Uh, you, you can bounce from doctor to doctor, as my sister did for three years, or you can spend hours and hours trying to self-diagnose online and an interesting statistic, um, the average patient who submits a case on our site has already spent over 200 hours trying to self-diagnose online. So we provide a nice third alternative to where, you know, for the, for the same speed and convenience of, of the Internet, we can provide answers that are much better than what you would get from, from spending another 200 hours searching online or from just bouncing from doctor to doctor for, for another few years. And I'm looking at one case now where I noticed that their current medications, there's a total of seven medications they're on here. Taking a look at the symptoms, I'd say, well, if you eliminate all those medications, that might get rid of all that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Don't, don't, don't get me started on how over medication. <laughs> no, I'm sure those lists get quite long in the medications. And, <laughs> and we, we certainly have covered that over the years here on the program as well. And, you know, again, I'm not a promoter pointing my fingers at pharmaceutical companies. You know, they're a company doing what they do. I ultimately say the listeners are, are responsible for the decisions they make, you know. And it's it's really fascinating to look at this, but you realize, you know, here's somebody who went to a doctor, uh, perhaps, I really don't know the story, but you're just taking a look at this and realizing, well, let's prescribe this. Well, let's go ahead and prescribe this for this, and all of a sudden now you see seven different medications, you know, with a chronic depression of 20 years. My goodness, I can see why the cost of all those medications are. That's kind of crazy. But how have the patients themselves uh, enjoyed this service, or what do they say about it? Well, the best part of my job is, is reading the, the quotes, the letters that we get in the notes from our patients after we've helped solve their case. Um, you know, we, we've collected now a long list of, of, of many pages of, of, of really kind words from, from our patients who tell us how we saved their life or they were sick for 20 years and then they got some answer on CrowdMed that, that, that led to the correct diagnosis or cure and they're now all better. And, and uh, you know, I, I know it's a fact we've saved several patients' lives and um, and uh, we've improved the lives of, 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 of dozens or maybe hundreds more. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been good. <laughs> it, it's fun to, um, to, hear, you know, to read those, those notes, and we have a few of those quotes on our, on our website if anyone wants to look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, but just a small sample. I, I think we posted maybe eight or, eight or nine patient quotes, and we have dozens of them. Um, so it's, uh, it's rewarding, and, uh, you know, the, the, about 60% of our patients tell us that we successfully brought them closer to a correct diagnosis or cure, mm-hmm. which is a statistic we're very proud of, considering how tough these cases are. And, uh, you know, we get lots of great feedback. So um, that's, again, the best part of, of doing what we do. Well, Jared, I can certainly say it's a wonderful service out there that hopefully will revolutionize in many ways the medical industry. So, again, we can get back to going to a doctor feeling confident that we will be treated in Instead of being shackled up with a lot of bureaucratic nonsense that tends to happen, I know as a father I went through that with my own son, 
where you know he was severely debilitated because of a sickness that he got to where he had to go through a physical rehabilitation. And the fact is, as I was I was talking with the rehabilitation specialist, she says she gets so fed up with you know insurance companies saying, well, we're not going to go ahead and approve this. She says they really need to get down here and see what some of these kids look like. You know, and it was just so, you know, hard. It, fortunately, it didn't happen in our case. You know, everything was pretty much approved. But, you know, the fact that I did see what she was talking about and realized, you mean to tell me a lot of these kids aren't getting the kind of therapy they need because somebody who's never even seen them has decided it's unnecessary? Really? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy the way that works. It's a shame. Um, yeah. you know, our medical system is, is broken in many ways, and, we, we, you know, crowd med, we can't fix everything, but we're trying to at least help out where we can. Well, you fix it by just simply coming up with something different, just like yeah, you've an alternative. Got. We want yeah. to give patients an alternative. That's, mm-hmm. that's exactly right. Well, I'm glad to be able to have you on the program today. We love bringing this to our, our listeners out there to share the new things that you typically don't see out there. And I can see how, over time, I think this is going to grow to be even bigger than it is this day and age. I can see the necessity of it. Great service you've created here. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and that's, that's, that's very much our hope. Okay, and go ahead for our listeners again, Jared, and give out your website one more time. Sure. It's uh, simply crowdmed.com. Crowdmed.com, and get those answers you're searching for and a lot quicker than you can expect. Jared, thank you for being here on the Beyond 50 radio program today. Thank you, Daniel. My pleasure. Thank you to the listeners out there for tuning in, just bringing great resources for you to use and share with others as well. Also find out more by visiting us at beyond50radio.com. The number 50 is what you're going to type in there. We have our weekly e-news updates. They are free. Subscribe. Just simply submit your email. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.